All right, so today I want to give you a sneak peek into my upcoming ball python breeding season. And pretty much where I am in the breeding season right now is I'm at the very tail end. We have like six eggs left in the incubator, almost 100 hatchlings we had this year. We had a very good year as far as ball python hatchlings, only six more to hatch out. And then there's like a two month leg where I feed my females. And then we have to start thinking about what we're going to pair up for the upcoming year. It's, it's always really exciting trying to figure out what I want to pair to which females and as a matter of fact I bred Bobby to quite a few snakes last year and I got a lot of hatchlings as a matter of fact uh, I had pretty much two years where Bobby bred a whole bunch of stuff and I have some holdbacks that are actually better than Bobby's so essentially what happened is Bobby here is the bamboo around my neck he actually produced some snakes where he pretty much made himself obsolete. So I was thinking maybe I won't breed Bobby this year. Maybe I'll breed some of the males that I'm growing up, some of the hatchlings that have been holdbacks that will replace them. And essentially they have more genes than just a straight bamboo. So for example, if I bred Bobby to a normal, I would get 50% normals, 50% bamboos. And although the normals sell pretty good, they're not really a high dollar animal. They're pretty much the cheapest snake you can buy. So I'm thinking maybe of upping my game a little bit and breeding some other stuff besides just a straight bamboo into some of my females. And I wanna show you a couple of my males that have bamboo in them that I'm thinking about breeding into some of my females emails and show you some of those breeding plants which would be pretty exciting so what I want to do is I want to pull a couple of those bamboo combos out of my rack and we want to get a weight on them so as far as, as breeding hatchlings or upcoming breeders you essentially you want to get to the point where your males weigh at least 500 grams and that's kind of the cutoff and that's kind of the good thing about males is is they only need to be 500 grams well actually I had a scaleless head my very first year I actually bred my scaleless head at 400 grams and essentially what happened is is the scaleless head got to the point where it actually kept eating through the breeding cycle and actually finally gained the weight and got up to 500 grams halfway through the breeding cycle and actually produced a whole bunch of scaleless head offspring which is pretty cool so I actually started one year with a 400 gram male and actually had some really good success but I'd say most people pretty much consider the cutoff for males at 500 grams the minimum size for breeding males to your females and then females on the other hand it usually takes I'd say at least two years I actually bred my clown female at two years and typically the minimum size is about 1500 grams the problem is if you breed your females too early I'm kind of thinking two years is maybe a little bit too early if you get kind of greedy and you want to push them and try to breed them at two years sometimes it can backfire I actually bred my pastel desert is a pastel spider desert ghost female and I tried to breed her at two years old and she didn't lay eggs and she's been an, an extended fast she's fasted pretty much for the last few months and, and pretty much she fasted since she started developing eggs and then she actually had eggs inside of her and then she reabsorbed them which can happen sometimes so she's probably been on a fast for i'd say six or seven months where uh, on the flip side if i wouldn't have bred her at year two and would have kept feeding her she would have kept eating instead of like 1500 grams now she'd probably be at 2000 or 2500 grams she'd be a really big snake by now where I could breed her on the third year and have a lot more eggs and a bigger snake. So that's kind of the risk of breeding females a little bit too early. And on the flip side, on males, it doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that they're actually ready. So if you actually bred a male, say you had like a 200 or 300 gram male and you tried to breed it to females, the other risk is you can actually breed a male to multiple females. And then, so that can actually backfire too. So if the male's not ready, all the females that you're trying to breed it to will actually not go. So it's actually worse breeding a younger male versus a younger female because you're risking multiple females and a lot bigger of, of part of your breeding season versus just 
just one snake if you breed a female too early. So what I'm going to do is I want to pull those males out of the hatchling rack. I have two of them that actually <laughs> Bobby kind of replaced himself, which is kind of interesting. And as you keep growing as a breeder and keep making better and better combos, holding stuff back, there's a lot of stuff along the way that kind of gets replaced. Of course, I won't get rid of Bobby. He is a good mascot for my channel. He loves being out every day on my shoulders and doing the YouTube thing. It's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those snakes out and let's check them out. All right, so take a look at this snake. This is a bamboo calico, and the calico is a really interesting gene. Essentially what it does is it gives it more of kind of like a spider pattern where the, you know, the spider kind of whitewashes out the sides and brings white up the sides, which is really cool. It's really intense. And I actually had a, I actually had a, a bamboo pastel calico that I actually had both of these for sale at the shows and someone offered me <laughs> a, a pretty crazy amount of money for my one that had actually had pastel in it and I gave in and I sold it but uh, luckily I kept this one this is actually really this is really all I need is the one with the calico and the bamboo and the funny thing is is the female that I got this from actually is a really picky eater and I'm not sure she'll go this year but you can see how beautiful this snake is she is this this is a male it is just really quite impressive and something with the the calico and the bamboo just really makes it pop i love how it really just amplifies both and so essentially this is not an allelic combo so so luckily it's it's actually they're both uh co-dominant so if i bred this to something i could actually reproduce this snake even if i bred this to a normal i could get more calico bamboos out of that out of that mix which would be pretty cool so this is, i'd say i'd say probably one of the best genes that goes with bamboo in my opinion hands down is calico and the interesting thing is is if you're looking at calico there are different uh pretty much different lines of calico and they're really not distinguished as far as is what you you know normally think of as a line like if you're looking at azanthic there's like T, uh, tsk there's v PPI axanthic, there's Jolif axanthic, and in some certain morphs, like Calico for instance, there's different lines, but nobody really distinguishes the different lines. So for example, you can actually buy into a Calico line and you don't know how much white you're gonna get. I've actually seen some Calicos that look nothing like this. As a matter of fact, I wanna show you on the internet. I wanna pull, some, pull up some pictures and I wanna show you on World of Ball Pythons what they say a Calico bamboo line looks like and let me tell you it is totally different than what this looks like this is really crazy really awesome it's probably one of the most impressive snakes that I have ever produced as far as just a straight combo what I want to do now is I want to get a weight on this guy and I'm sure this guy is way over 500 but I just want to make sure I kind of give you an idea of how much this weighs in grams pretty much the minimum is 500 grams and if I was to guess on this one I'd say it's probably I'd say this is probably close to 900 grams I guess maybe I'm guessing 850 is what I'm gonna guess so <laughs> let's pull out the balance the scale and we'll take a weight on this guy all right so I have my balance here and let's take a weight on this guy and see how much he weighs He's coming in at, ooh, I was a little bit off. He is actually 935, 936. He's almost 1,000 grams, which is pretty big. That is, I just love these calico bamboos. They are absolutely awesome. And I definitely want to produce more of these. This is, this is, <laughs> this is a center. It almost takes my breath away just looking at this. So I want to actually show you one other snake that has replaced Bobby. It is a really impressive snake, almost as impressive as this. Let me show you that snake. All right, so take a look at this beauty. This is a blue-eyed leucistic, and it actually is 
a bamboo lesser, which is an allelic combination. And he's going into shed a little bit, a little bit grumpy. I pulled him out, he was hissing at me a little bit. And the interesting thing about the bamboo lesser is that if you breed it to a normal, half the babies come out bamboo, half the babies will come out lesser, which is pretty amazing. And it's it's kind of interesting because, you know, the blue-eyed leucistics, pretty much all of them are allelic combos. So if you have uh, two genes that are together in the same snake, essentially you'll get no normals produced from a blue-eyed leucistic. I actually had a female that I actually sold. Uh, it was exactly like this, except it was a female that I produced last year. This one I produced last year as well. And this one is going to be a big breeder. So essentially... What I'm thinking is with this snake, I could breed this to some of my normals. And if I bred it to a normal, I would actually get no normals out of the mix. Versus when I bred Bobby to the normals, I was getting 50% bamboos, 50% normals. And in this instance, I'll actually get 50% lessers. I'll get no normals at all, which is pretty awesome. And I'll, I'll actually get a few normals from some of my other breeding pairs, but I won't get as many as I got this. This year I had so many normals this year it is unbelievable it's like half my hatchlings this year look completely normal so I'm trying to eliminate that by still using my normal females because they're you know big enough and ready to breed and essentially I want to just get some powerful males in the mix to where I could still use the same females but I could use a different male and produce some better combinations so the only the only bummer with this snake is I can't really stack jeans on top of this so for example with the uh, bamboo calico say for example if I bred it to a pinstripe I would actually get a bamboo calico pinstripe as one of the possible offspring. So for this one, this is a bamboo lesser. If I bred this to a pinstripe, I couldn't get a bamboo lesser pinstripe because it's it's allelic. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, I guess. You get no normals, but you won't actually stack genes on top of each other, which is kind of a bummer. So for example, um, if you wanted to produce a three gene animal with this, you'd actually have to start with a two gene female because on, stacked on top of that would either be the lesser or the bamboo. You wouldn't get the lesser and the bamboo. So it's just, it's kind of it's kind of a double edged sword because you get no normals, but you really can't stack up on top of the snake as far as the offspring are concerned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this one over and take away. This one looks maybe a little bit lighter than the other one, and I'm actually surprised. The other one has had a thousand grams just after one year. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. So let's take a weight on this, see how much this one weighs. So the interesting thing about this snake is the white snakes are everybody's favorite. Everybody loves the white snakes. As a matter of fact, everyone comes up to my tables at the shows and they say, hey, can I hold the white snake? It's pretty much the most popular of all my snakes at the reptile. Well, this one's actually bigger. This is 1,055 grams. That is a beast after just being one year old. That is a pretty big snake. And of course I have pretty much an unlimited supply of rats and mice that I can feed these since I breed my own rodents. And that's pretty much why these guys are getting so big because I feed pretty much just my excess when I'm going through the tubs. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to actually bring you over to my computer and I want to show you kind of the flip side of the breeding. Uh, essentially what I'm thinking about doing is bringing this to normals, breeding the other one to a lemon blast <laughs> if I can hang on to this guy. <laughs> He's squirming all over the place. So, so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to breed the calico bamboo to a lemon blast, which is a pastel pin stripe and I want to show you kind of where I, I plug in the morphs and calculate the results as a matter of fact I actually have four lemon blast females that I work with and there's one in particular that produced some extremely bright pastel offspring so I'm thinking she carries a really intense pastel line in her so you know what I'm thinking if I want to hold something back and stack onto that a bamboo calico I definitely want to use that female to get the intense line of pastel into my offspring especially if I'm going to hold them back so let's jump over to the computer and check out the, the morph calculator 
Yes. All right, so I am over here at the Genetic Wizard on the world of ball pythons. And let me tell you, if you want to figure out what the results of your pairing are for your ball pythons, this is the ultimate place to be. There's other calculators, but I'd say this is probably the number one place that I always go to to figure out the pairing. And probably the main reason is, is they have pictures of everything, the adults and the offspring. And it's, it's really easy to, to help you identify some of the offspring of your pairing. So essentially what you do is you come over here, World of Ball Pythons, Genetic Wizard, and you put in your combo. So for example, for the male, I put in Bamboo Cal and you can scroll through and pretty much pick any gene that you want over here and add it to the list. So I actually put in my specific pairing that I'm thinking about pairing this year, which is my bamboo calico with my pastel pinstripe, which is lemon blast. I actually have four lemon blasts and I'm really focused on the one that has the intense pastel because really I want to hold back <laughs> some of those snakes for my own. So if I can actually hit the bamboo calico pastel pinstripe in one snake that would essentially replace my bamboo calico breeder that replaced Bobby so you see as you keep moving forward through the breeding operation year after year after year you actually produce better snakes with more genes and if I could take a four gene animal and breed it to a normal I would get a whole variety of a whole bunch of different stuff versus if I just bred a bamboo to a normal and you get half bamboos and half normals, which is kind of interesting. The other interesting thing I found on the world of ball pythons, if you take a look at their bamboo calico, this to me looks kind of like some of my bamboos. It doesn't really look like a bamboo calico. I think they really need some help on some of their pictures because let me tell you, the one I just showed you is supposed to be the same as this one and I don't think they're actually the same, which is kind of interesting. And, th and that said, I, I would say that there's different lines of calico. This this may just be a really low expression calico on top of the bamboo. I've actually seen some lines of calico that really aren't that impressive, which is also interesting. So if you actually do this and you put in your male and your female and you hit calculate, essentially what you get is you get all the results down on the bottom. Look at all the stuff you can get from the, from those uh, two snakes, it's pretty interesting. So the the the, the thing the F, if you actually look at the very bottom of the list, the bottom of the list is the crown jewel, which is the bamboo calico pastel pinstripe. And the interesting thing is they don't actually have that combination listed here on World of Ball Pythons because if they did, it would just be one link, and you could actually click on it and go and see what that result looks like. So. We we actually don't have that snake he listed here in World of Ball Pythons. So if we hit the crown jewel, we don't really know what it looks like, which is which is kind of difficult if you're actually breeding and you produce some offspring. You don't really know if you hit it because you don't have an example to follow. But if you look at the next one up, this is a calico pastel pinstripe, which is actually also called a calico blast or a calico lemon blast. And I actually pulled that one up and you can actually see here the calico pastel pinstripe. And the interesting thing is there's actually seven pictures for this particular combination and multiple people have submitted their pictures for this example. So as you scroll through these and you look at the different example, look at this one compared to the one before. That is completely different. This one is a lot more impressive and if you kind of look through the examples, some of them are a lot more impressive than the other ones. Look at this one. This is absolutely incredible. I can't even believe that is the same snake. It's absolutely, this, this snake, as a matter of fact, if I actually produce this snake, I would definitely hold it back. That thing is screaming. I can't even believe it. If you, if you just, just look at some of these examples of the same thing, it just kind of blows me away. So if we go back to this and look at the Bamboo Lemon Blast, you can actually click directly on these links. That's what I like about the World of the Ball Pythons. It just doesn't give you the results. It gives you the link and where if you click on that, you'll actually come over here and you get the Bamboo Lemon Blast, which is pretty cool. And not only that is, is well, for this particular snake, you only have one picture. Picture, but in a lot of these you have multiple examples of the same morph and it really helps you identify what's going on. So if you come over here to the next one, this is also another possibility. This is the bamboo calico 
pastel and let me tell you this one is, is not like the bamboo pastel calico that I produced that thing as a matter of fact I produced one last year and it looked exactly like the one we were just looking at but instead of the white it was bright yellow it was really crazy looking I, I'd say it's probably the best combo and I can't remember what I sold that for I, th I think I, I sold it for quite a bit of money someone offered me some money at the show and I was like I, I can't refuse that and I took it and, and now it's it's always like you know sometimes you wish you could you could keep them all but you can't and then another thing is I can actually produce that maybe even more intensely if I took my my calico bamboo crossed it with my lemon blast and got the even more intense pastel on top of that combo and maybe I can actually produce one that's even more brighter which is you know you sell something and you're always like all right I can make another one <laughs> I can sell it this year but you know a couple more years I can make another one which is pretty cool so here is another uh, thing that we can actually get from that pairing crossing my calico bamboo with the lemon blast we could get a bamboo pastel and the interesting thing about the bamboo pastel is is it seems like when they first hatch they look like a regular bamboo where the head is a little bit lighter that's that's kind of what tricks you you hatch them out and you really can't tell which ones are pastel and which ones aren't but as they age I found they really start getting this yellow hue all across the snake and this is this is kind of what my yearlings looked like when I was holding back some of my yearlings. And originally I was wanted to hold them back and wanted to keep them and then I realized I was out of rack space and I have all these other projects that I want to work on and it's, it gets to the point like, all right, I want to add some more projects. I want to hold some of these other ones back. What do I want to get rid of? And and that's that's kind of where uh, it's it's... It's, it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you didn't sell that one because nobody wanted it. It's like, actually, I didn't sell that one because I wanted it. <laughs> That's really the reason why I didn't sell it, which is, is kind of, it's kind of a dilemma that you're in. You produce these snakes and you want to keep them, but you can't keep them all. And unless you really expand your operation. And I'm not actually, you actually pay more for the racks than you do for the snakes when you're expanding, which is kind of crazy. So here's another one that can come out of that combination. This is the nitrous. This is pretty cool. This is actually a bamboo pinstripe. It's actually the nickname is the nitrous. Really cool looking snake. I haven't actually produced one of these. I actually produced a bamboo lemon blast, but not the bamboo nitrous. It is pretty cool. So here is another one that's really cool. This is the calico pinstripe. And if you take a look at this one, it doesn't look like it has much calico in it. I think it's because of the specific line of calico, which is kind of interesting. So here is a bamboo calico. This is the one we looked at earlier. Take a look at this. This this is kind of interesting. This will actually enlighten you to the different lines of pastel and the different lines of calico. There's there's it, it's funny people say just kind of broadly I have a pastel or I have a calico and there's so many different variations of those two morphs and when they come together it is like looking at completely different snakes. It's almost like when you're looking at the highways and the freeways there's different lines of yellow belly and different lines of asphalt and grass and when you start mixing them together you can get completely different looking snakes based on the different lines of those specific genes. So in this case you'll see that some of them are really crazy looking. This is this is a calico pastel. This one is absolutely crazy and then you look at some of these other ones and they're completely different. Some of them have really bright yellows and some of them have more or less of the calico. There's actually 27 pictures of this. This is pretty amazing. And look at this one. This is this is doesn't even look like the same snake. It looks like there's something else in here. I mean, you start you start scrolling through some of these and some of them look kind of faded out. Some of them look really intense. Some of them have more or less pattern and it's it's pretty it's pretty incredible when you start looking at the the calicos and the pastels, the different lines, especially when they start coming together. It's it's pretty amazing. So let's jump over here to, this is this is kind of interesting. So I went over to the genetic wizard and I wanted to test it just to see how smart the genetic wizard was. And I put in bamboo lesser. And the interesting thing is bamboo lesser is an allelic combination. So, so if this wasn't allelic, if you had two genes, you get bamboos, 
you would get lessers and you would get bamboo lessers if it wasn't allelic. But since it's allelic, you only get bamboos and lessers and no normals, which is kind of interesting. So here you see this is this is actually my bamboo lesser crossed with a normal female. It's kind of one of the plans that I had imagined. And here is the results. <laughs> it actually shows you get 50% lessers. 50% bamboo, so the genetic wizard actually knows that this is an allelic combination and gives you the right results, which is pretty cool. So if you come over here, if you're wondering, this is what a lesser ball python looks like. I actually have a few lessers. It's really, it's really impressive. It's there. There's a lot of different shades of lesser. Some are really bright, and they tend to fade out a little bit as they get older. And when they're really young, they're super bright. But uh, I've seen some older ones that are pretty bright too. So there's slightly different lines. But let me tell you, a lesser is really cool. It's actually in the blue-eyed leucistic. So when you mix it with bamboo, which is also in the blue-eyed leucistic, cystic family that you actually get the all white snake which is pretty cool and then for bamboos which is they actually have 12 pictures of bamboos and I'm thinking over here they may need a little help with their, their pictures all these bamboos over here on the world of ball pythons are all really reduced patterns the, the sides are completely wiped out and you know the bamboos are extremely polymorphic I actually have some bamboos where the the patterns and the colors come all the way down and that I think that really needs to be the picture that is uploaded over here on the world of ball pythons get some bamboos on here that look like the completely crazed pattern you know instead of just the reduced pattern which is kind of interesting so actually I was kind of poking around in world of ball pythons and you can actually contribute your pictures if you want to contribute so here you can submit pictures to the morph list and it tells you you know they have to be on a white background they have to be 1200 by 900 pixels and you can actually put your name as the breeder which is pretty cool you come over here and you could you actually I was looking through the breeders on here <laughs> I'm actually not listening but you can actually put a new breeder so I can actually input my my info and I could take credit for that picture and have my picture over on the world of ball pythons which would be pretty cool <laughs> so that is pretty much the the genetic wizard on the world of ball pythons if you haven't been there I would highly recommend going there and poking around. <laughs> All right, so that is a sneak peek into the upcoming ball python breeding season. And I think pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to permanently retire Bobby here as a breeder. And instead of moving him through the racks with the females, I'm going to keep him here in front of the camera as a permanent YouTube star. So it is time for the question of the day. And now I'm good asks, who made your rack system and can you send me a link to the company? And that is a very good question. I've had quite a few people ask me where I got my rack systems from. And pretty much the way I started early on in ball pythons, I started with glass aquariums and little hides and little heat mats in the glass aquariums. And let me tell you, when you're starting out in ball pythons, it is really difficult to come up with the money to buy rack systems because you're, you're kind of obsessed over buying snakes and you buy a bunch of snakes and the bedding and the food and the heaters and the, the heat pads and all that and you really don't have a whole lot of money left over for enclosures so essentially what I did is, is I decided to get out of the glass aquariums because it's really not ideal for ball pythons and I was really looking for some really professional racks that I would never have to upgrade never have to replace and the thing that really sold me on these these are actually made by ARS caging arscaging.com and the, the thing that sold me on them is you can actually buy them one level at a time you can buy one level or multiple levels and the other thing I really like is they stack on top of each other so for example you can stack the 5040s on top of a boa tub and then the 7030s on top of the 8018s and you can kind of mix and match a whole rack so for example if you didn't want a whole rack of these 5040s over here you could get a partial rack and not actually not all of them stack interchangeably but some of them do on top of each other as a matter of fact I actually built uh, an adapter for my mouse rack and I actually welded it together and found a paint that was close and actually stacked my mouse tubs on top of my rat tubs I was getting kind of creative 
because ARS caging doesn't actually sell the adapters. I wish they actually would so you can actually stack anything on top of anything if they had the right adapter. But you know, if, if you're a welder and you're creative, you can actually do it yourself, which is pretty cool. So that is pretty much it. That wraps up my discussion of just a sneak peek of what I'm doing with the bamboos in the upcoming breeding season. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.